Hello everyone out there. Today we're going to explain the Match 3 software basic use. Uh, this due to some of you have requested and are interested in getting involved on in this software and learning how to operate Match 3 based machines properly. So we're going to make an exercise in a very basic way. To begin, uh, on the screen all we can see is, about, is what the software is all about, right? Every time we start the software, uh, the first thing we need to do is to deactivate the alarm on this reset button here. Yes, and your keyboard is usually set with uh, the key ESC or escape. Yeah. So you have to click on, on this reset button here. You can see all the environment information and the uh, Initially, we have to this cycle start button here, then we have pause button, and then we have this stop button. And reset can be also used to stop the software as well. On this part here, we can edit the G code. Yeah, it will display uh, how to open it and change some stuff in it. Yeah, on this area, we have the timing. It will display how long the program will last while performing it. Yeah, uh, here we have the feed rate which displays the program speed. And when starting the match tree, the feed rate is set by default in 100%. It's important to take this into account. Then the, we have the spindle speed. So as his name suggests, it speeds the spindle, right? And the, it will work properly as long as it's being controlled with a, with a PWM cord. Uh, so first we're gonna make the exercise of starting from zero. This, uh, this is in order to perform the, the, the spindle hitting, right? So when having the 24,000 RPM spindles or more, even with these two small 12,000 RPM spindles, it's important to set a warm up before starting to work. Why? This is with the purpose of widening the bearings life cycle. When moving the machine to reach the zero point, uh, you can see the zero it's set on this area and pointing out, right? It's a polycarbonate, it's a polymer. I need to move the machine to that point so I click on TAB on my keyboard, right? Then the jog is displayed uh, or how to move such program. What we have here is the speed it's, uh, the, the machine it's about to move and uh, we have uh, every axis, right? For example, I'm gonna move X, right? Then why? Remember the machine's positives and negatives in order not to move it the wrong way, yeah? And from here, um, I can set the speed. In this case, I'm setting an 80%. Uh, so we can see the machine moves, moves faster, right? So what we will do here is to get closer to that zero point. When being close enough, the idea is to decrease speed with a view to making moves more, more precise, more accurate, right? Um, so you can see I'm placing it in the, the desirable spot. It means the zero point. In here, I, and here I already have the spindle when I want it to be, right? Just right here, good. So I click uh, TBA once more to watch full screen and uh, the zero point is quite easy to get as you can see we just what do we have to do here we need to click on zero x then the zero y and uh, finally zero z so uh, that way I get a zero point once more I'm moving the machine just to make sure the zero point is in position okay I click TBA and set a higher speed, okay? Always in Z positive. And then I can move freely in every axis. All of this is carried up to verify if the zero point is just fine, it's okay. Therefore, what I'm about to do is to turn the spindle on just before checking the zero point, of course. 
And uh, I'm, I'm doing that with the purpose of avoiding the tool to crash into the material itself, right? So uh, I'm turning the spindle on and then I am clicking here on MDI, Alt F2, right? And we'll set as follows, right? G double O, uh, it's important we make this in capital letter, of course, which, um, which means fast forward at a speed of X O, Y O, and then click enter. Okay, uh, we see uh, it's in position. Now, as we are entering the material, we type G O one Z O F five double O, um, and that's to promote a smaller move. That way, I can react if something goes wrong. Yeah. Then, uh, then we see uh, how the tool went down and reach the zero point, okay? This way we realize that the zero point is placed in the right way. Well, in order to guarantee the spindle's life cycle, the idea is not to start using the spindle when it's cold as soon as we turn on the machine after several days without using it. So it's recommended not to use it as its maximum RPM, but to warm it up progressively before starting a program. If the spindle has a PWM, it can be done that, that way previously mentioned. Otherwise, in case it has a potentiometer, we have to increase the RPM little by little. As here we have a PWM, we'll do it this way. Now we're going back to MDI, type uh, MO3S4000. So we are leading the spindle to turn clockwise, 4000 RPMs, click enter, yeah, so we can see that the spindle turns on in such RPMs. The idea is to keep those RPMs for a 4-5 minute turn approximately and then raising them progressively. Okay? This is a 12,000 RPM spindle and I'll increase it in 3 steps. 24,000 PMW control spindles cooled with water should be increased every 5,000 5 minutes. 10,000 in 5 minutes, 15,000 in 5 minutes, and then get the 24,000. In this particular case, as we have 12,000, let's say the 12 minutes have already passed, and uh, as the spindle is already on. We don't need to apply MO3, but only applying the RPM value. So let's say, let's type as 8,000, enter and we see how the rpms increase right then we leave it five minutes and that way uh, we'll be five minutes that way and finally it displays the rpm total value now we're gonna type s12000 and then click enter there uh the spindle is at its maximum rpms uh, just the way we let her uh, increasingly from the beginning. Uh, this is done in order to guarantee a suitable warm up and, um, of course, a bearing care. Yeah. When turning the spindle off, uh, we are proceed to type. M5, enter, and this is the code to turn the spindle off. Okay. With a view to loading the G code, that's been that's been previously set uh, with another software such as a master cam, uh, etc. Yeah. Um, we need to click here on file load G code uh, we have this file with its different extensions such as um, uh, .tap .nc .txt okay I got this one by default and here uh, we have a software preview of um, uh, what it's about to be executed okay
all this environment is what is about to be executed. Then we have G code here. We click on G code, and you know it's it's recommended to write the G uh, the code G64 uh, in capital letter, of, of course, um, in order to promote a smooth cut and a fast functioning and processing of the machine code itself. Okay. Now we're gonna delete these two codes here. This first code here. And uh, mm, this second code uh, is about uh, a tool switch, which is not currently available. And uh, at the end, we've got this 09 code um, that is to turn the cooler off. I don't have that one, but I have the spindle. So I will turn it off by clicking on, on File, uh, Save, and it's done. Okay. Once the program is edited and loaded, uh, these two lines here represent the coordinate system origin. How the material is centered according to the system origin. Okay. The idea is not to send the program straight away due to the forward move uh, could be so high. We don't want to break any tool. What we want to do is to make sure it starts accordingly. Okay, so it is recommended to get the forward move down, let's say 17%, okay, yeah. Then we click on uh, cycle start and we can see how the spindle places itself, turns on, and uh, we can also see how it moves in the first mechanism position, okay. We'll check it out uh, to control this part uh, matches what we need, okay? We can also see how it's working properly. The circle I've drawn is a bit bigger, but it's visible. Yeah, it's, it's totally visible, it started in the right position. Uh, the forward move could be adjusted in a desirable height. Yeah, so as you can see, how the spindle is moving, right? The recommended maximum is 100% of what was initially programmed. If you did it wrong and programmed it so low, then you can increase it even to 100% of, uh, in this particular case, I let it there, okay? When intending to pause the program, you can click here on fit hold, all right? It immediately stops in case I want to make a revision of any kind, okay? And then I click back on cycle start. Uh, when clicking stop here, it stops not only the program, but also the spindle. It can even lose track of the coordinate it was working on. So if we're going to turn the spindle on, we can make it straight from this button here, uh, spindle CWA5, and then cycle start again. All right. Uh, well, uh, this is all I have to share with you guys. Uh, I hope you find it pretty useful. Later on, uh, I will be posting more CNC stuff. Um, you are fully invited to give a like to this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot for your attention. Hope to see you soon, guys. Bye.